obviously in ninth place, but they really, as I said, need to have teams fall over. Parramatta play the Knights and Northern Spirit play Wollongong, so they are both winnable games. But South Melbourne are in the box seat, sitting inside that top six. They have a superior goal difference as well, one which reads plus six. So that'll be an advantage at the end of the day. Yeah, I think South Melbourne will wrap it up today, though. You know, I think they'll get a result and they'll go into the finals as a real underdog and a, and a really dangerous player. Wollongong went down to South Melbourne last week at home, quite emphatically, really. And it was because of a man named Kom Butzianis who started it off just like that. Priceless goal indeed. Con Anthopoulos, former South Melbourne player, got him back on track. But then it was on all one-way traffic and South Melbourne with another experienced campaigner, Vaughan Coveney. Well, that was one of the reasons they've struggled. Coveney and Chimboli being injured, but both of them, you know, Cove uh, Coveney scoring three goals in this game and uh, Chimboli a few weeks ago scoring a couple of goals against Adelaide. So really the senior players are, you know, starting to show the way and, you know, the balance is perfect at the moment. You wouldn't expect any changes from a performance like that, four no. goals to one? No, no. Listen, the team over the last, what, four weeks have been very solid, you know, and it's going to be very hard for the young boys to come into the squad now, especially with the senior players back. What about Marconi? They come in after a thrilling 3-2 win last weekend. They had to do it from behind, though. Yeah, I think, you know, the biggest problem they're going to have is their injuries, but, uh, you know, Tomei obviously was very deadly in scoring three goals in the game, but... Uh, Possibly one of the biggest problems Marconi have is they, you know, giving away silly goals and, and they're marking in the box. And that was a great example again. But, uh, you know, like I said, they can't afford to do that with South Melbourne. No, Chris Trajanovsky there getting his second. That made it two goals to one. And then up Bob Norm Tome again in the 58th minute. A lovely little volley there. And he got his third in the 63rd minute. He's doubled his tally for the season. Six goals. Doesn't say that he's an emphatic goal scorer, does it? But he, he could be nuisance value tonight to South Melbourne. Well, a lot of responsibility on him today with the two strikers being out, Mezzano and Brownlee. But uh, in saying that, you know, he's a key player that, with experience and um, a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. Uh, a huge talking point now about Brownlee and about Mezzano. Mezzano is suspended, but Brownlee, with one game to go in the season, such a precarious position getting in the top six, he's been allowed to go to Europe. There is a starting 11. Yeah, well, you've got to feel sorry for Asteri um, with, the, with, you know, the transitional period with the team. They've got a chance to make the, uh, the, of the finals, but uh, the timing right, you know, I really think that's good. it's obviously a question they've got to look at. Well, one or both of these teams' season ends here this evening. Two of the most celebrated clubs in the National Soccer League. And interestingly enough, they've never drawn in Melbourne in 24 games. Greg Blake's your match commentator. Thanks, fellows. Lee Sterry there, the coach of Marconi, looking on as his Chargers go out to do battle. Here at the Bob Jane Stadium tonight, we've had around about 13,500 minutes of footy so far this year. But for these two teams, it just comes down to the next 90 as the two skippers exchange pleasantries. Paul Trimboli, of course, on your right, and Dominic Longo on the left. And they share a joke as the coin is tossed. It is round 26 of the season. Eddie Frenchovich, well, what a roller coaster it's been for him this year in his first season at the Bob Jane Stadium. After round 13, when these two sides clashed, South Melbourne were rock bottom of the ladder. If they can win this one tonight, they're in the top six. It would be a monstrous comeback. Will the South Melbourne fairy tale end in happily ever after or a huge anti-climax? Well, Marconi, they have got a huge task in front of them tonight. They must win by four goals here at the Bob Jane Stadium. Mark Shield, the referee, to the top of the screen there. Getting ready to set us underway. Still plenty of fans edging their way through the turnstiles on this Friday evening. Just one of half a dozen clashes this weekend to decide the ladder for the season and the top six. The other five games all to come on Sunday. It's Marconi. The first use of the footy. Norman Tomei on screen there. Hat trick last week to get Marconi home over Brisbane. 3 2 in a thriller. Kept their season alive. 
and South Melbourne, the form team of the competition since early January. And put South Melbourne's record in the second half of the season better even than Perth Glory, believe it or not. So they are hot. But this is a pressure situation for South Melbourne. You just wonder they've come all this way and paved the road, so to speak. But there's still a victory away from cementing their place in the final series. And Mike Carney, well, they are they're really up against it. They're missing Royce Brownlee, John Maisano, 17 of their 31 goals this year, missing from the lineup for this one. It's a bit like uh, Custer at the Little Beaverhorn. It's a very, very big ask. Mosafidis comes down, Hopkins cleans it up. Rakovic, Chisnorbo. They're confident at the moment, South Melbourne. It was an interesting note. As they lined up for the national anthem, there was a lovely moment when the Marconi players linked arms and really made a commitment to give it their best shot tonight. That's a few years. That was one in. Rollkeeper came and missed, but the cleanup work was excellent from Adcos. Ball. He had his career best day for Marconi last weekend with that triple. Lucianis. What a difference he has made to the South Melbourne team. Panopoulos squeezes it through the gap. Trimboli. And again, the skipper. It's an easier way. Vote. Turn it over though, Marconi. Pretty cheaply too. Panopoulos tried to sidestep past Longo. A lot of nerves out there early on. The stakes are huge in this. Trimboli. Mitchell yeah, skies one. Oh, goalkeeper. Looking into the floodlights, but he did very, very well in the end, Michael Turnbull. Coney would approach this match. They have to win and win big. Alan Davidson, I mean, do you come into this one and just throw caution to the wind if you're Mark Coney? Well, actually, that's a luxury South Melbourne have. They have to come and score four goals. So under those conditions, South Melbourne uh, are sitting comfortable where they won't sit in all the time. So, But, you know, I think South Melbourne, with their attacking format, they, they've got not to get frustrated. That's the main thing. They just play the normal game and wait, wait for the opportunities. It's a beautiful night for footy, Dave, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. The conditions are perfect, no breeze, and uh, possibly a bit chilly for the supporters, but great, great conditions for the players. And about eight months ago, nine months ago, these two teams started their pre-season. It'll be so close to The crucial action, I mean, the finals action, that's where you want to be. Somebody's going to be hurting, I reckon, by the end of tonight. Position changed three times it Stands out. Oh, again, a cheap giveaway. He did well to rectify it. The situation for Stanzo. But there are, as Paul Wade joins us, it's pretty apparent, Wade, that uh, a lot of these guys are probably feeling the nerves, aren't they? I mean, it's an important, it's a final, isn't it? Before the final start. Well, it's interesting because I was thinking the passing going on at the moment is crisp. It's, it's to feet, it's in front of players so they can run on. They don't have to change direction. 
To say that there is so much at stake, I th think the passing for the most part in the early stages of this game has been terrific. And uh, they'll only grow in confidence. I can imagine this game will explode if the, uh, the confidence builds up as it is at the moment. It's a remarkable scenario, isn't it? We came here on opening day and saw South Melbourne cleaned out by Perth Glory, 3-1. Thought that had set the tone for the season. And the halfway mark, Perth indeed were top of the ladder, and South Melbourne were at the bottom. And all of a sudden, we might meet in the finals yet. Who knows? Arm wrestle is won well by Brass. But no opportunity. In the end, South Melbourne's defence equal best in the competition. Conceded just 21 goals for the season so far. And the Dragovic. Just like you there, Greg, it looks like Bove's come off with a, a hamstring problem, so, uh, and it does look like he's shaking up to come on again, and... Uh, at least there is speaking to Radulovic to uh, play in his position, it appears. Just keep an eye on that. And in fact, I think you've nailed it, uh, Al. Yeah, there. Uh, yep. Yeah, it looks like um, Bova. He was. He's looked like he torn his hamstring there. So uh, not a good start for Marconi at all. Yes. Sometimes. Dice roll against you, don't they? But certainly in the very, very proud history of the Marconi Stallions Club, if they could come up with a victory here under the circumstances tonight, and it's certainly not out of the question, it would be uh, a pretty significant victory. It's not a grand final. It's not even a finals match, but it would be against the odds. Yes, it is. Really no. Cannons for Fomo. Of course. Took a little nudge off Vaughan Coveney. He got a triple last week, Vaughan Coveney, of course. South Melbourne. Tore Wollongong to bits, 4-1. Annapolis just edges Gibson off the football. Trimboli, some room to work with. Gutianas peels away left. He goes up the middle for Cobb and he skips off his toe. Goalkeeper, quickly. particularly up in Sydney. We'll be barracking for uh, Marconi tonight, Wadey. Parramatta fans, of course, and Northern Spirit fans, because Marconi get a result here and the season stays alive for those two clubs. Well, the, uh, the Palace, as they call it, the Marconi Club, I could imagine will be uh, chock-a-block tonight, whether they're playing the pokies or they've uh, just sat in to uh, catch it on C7 Sport. Pokies will be vacant at the moment, I reckon, Wadey. They'll be around the, around the big screen. Shot across the body. Radulovic, the sub. Longo. Some muscle. Pops the header in the air, though. Trimboli down. Exchange is quick. Trimboli. Oh. The look away ball was almost on the money. Costanzo thunders clear. Hits half field. Out crosses the wide man. Main Gibson awaiting. His Norbo read it well. He'll have to do it again, though. No. He goes out cross of his Norbo. Uh, his Norbo, who was away on trials earlier in the season for South Melbourne. And out cross. Coming in from Perth to Marconi last year. Uh, remarkable that uh, 
was Brownlee looking at trials has been allowed to head off to the UK this crucial stage of the season Sekulovsky found himself with the footy at his feet good running back no web parry and thrust from both sides at the moment the real edge to this contest already Sionis Trimboli exchange that by uh, Frost or Gibson rather Yes, kept his balance well. The skipper. <laughs> South Melbourne. No change to the side, which flashed Wollongong last weekend. Now, I can't even made the two. We've talked about it. My son has suspended Brownlee. And of course, in the UK, Frost and Chad Gibson come off the bench for this final regular season match of season 2001-2002. Sepedes. Gibson. South Melbourne played and lost at Marconi in round 13. There's no Luzianis, no Trimboli. Those two players, add in a mix, Vaughan Colby, I think, scored 15 goals combined. No flag on this. No flag, Luzianis. Get the corner. First of the game. To South Melbourne. They've pumped up their uh, attack, South Melbourne, from around half a goal a game for the first half of the season to in excess of two a game since. Nearly 14 away, first half, round 26. South Melbourne against Marconi, Tomei. From downtown, nothing from it. Well, Marconi at Davo, they're a long way short of a, a first team, really. And yet, uh, they've scrubbed up okay, haven't they? Yeah, I think they're playing a very good technical game here. He's designed to go forward. Yeah, exactly. But that's what didn't get the angle on that. Yeah, that's one of the problems though, South Melbourne. They're getting frustrated in that front third because Marconi are, are sitting behind the ball and, and Gibson and Kerr are just sitting in front of the, the strikers there and they're finding it very hard to get the ball into them. So they've got to be patient. They've got to play the ball a lot quicker forward because Trimboli is quite often free there behind Kerr. So... Uh, it's something they've just got to work at, but uh, they're, make, they're frustrating it because they're dropping so f deep behind the ball that Gibson and Kerr. Durakovic. Well, Marconi Stallions, they have a wonderful history in the NSL. Four championships. They've been to the finals 
15 times more than any other club in the history of the competition. It's been five years, six years since they missed the cut. It doesn't happen too often. Wow. Rusk did all the hard work. They are threatening the Stallions. Land cross. Belts it. Kuznorbo took the brunt of it. Chad Gibson. of former Sydney United players now in the green with Marconi. Lee Sterry to the right of the screen. It's an interesting story, Lee Sterry, at the moment. Uh, Paul Waite, because he doesn't have a contract for next year, apparently, yet. And yet, uh, you'd reckon they'd have to think about it if they got up here tonight. Well, not according to Lee Sterry, who says he could be coaching his last game at the Marconi Club. Yellow card. Of course, Rally Rasic is coming in to do a managerial role, which will uh, take up the coaching as well as the marketing and promotion, signing of players. Been a lot talked about in Sydney. A few people agree with it, a few people don't. It'll be one that will be discussed over the uh, over the summer break or the winter break, I should say. But uh, either way you look at it, Lee Sterry has been a, a loyal servant of this club, and uh, I, for one, personally don't agree with the way he's been treated. Well, not only that. I mean, you have a look at his record, given the football teams, given the cattle he's had to work with. I think you could uh, question Lee Sterry's ability to coach a side. But anyway, as it's all subjective, isn't it? Madoka steps in front of Longo. Tomei. Frosk is running with him to his right. Tomei wanted to go alone, tried to dance through the ruck. And in the end, the percentage ball away by Mama Durakovic. That was superb defending, Mermin Durakovic. He was running back at 100 mile an hour. He didn't throw a tackle in, didn't sell himself. I'm sure, Davo, you would have uh, reveled in that situation. I think, I think, I think uh, the key thing there was his concentration. And I think a lot of people don't pick up. He's watching the runner and he's watching the ball and his concentration is at the highest level. So, well done, Mermin. Because Norbo swings out of trouble and Chops away though by Chris Kier. His hands out, not loses it. What a good pick up. Like Costanzo was from Adelaide City a couple of years back. Time mate. Getting nothing from Jurakovic. And Demetrius, did he get a shot at what a good one? His sixth grand final or seventh grand final. That's the damage. He has a remarkable record. Yeah. Well, they're showing uh, plenty of front at the moment, Marconi. Nothing to pay off. Trimboli just waits the seven iron for Coveney. The speech to three last week. Another here. He was a heartbeat away. Exciting stuff from South Melbourne, Tromboli. The setup was a delight and Cogney, when he hoists the sails and off he goes. I think what a lot of people might not appreciate was that he actually won that ball 75 yards out from goal. He chased it down, he played the ball to somebody else and then he was on his bike and Paul Tromboli supplied that killer blast pass that we all know he can.
But that's the sort of thing that is getting South Melbourne such rave reviews at the moment. They're not just goal scorers. They're tacklers, they're chasers. They're doing everything there is to do in football, and they're doing it well. It's the 50th game between South Melbourne and Mark Carney. Two of the clubs to play in the first NSL season. They have a uh, tremendous rivalry. Ask. Kept honest. Jamai back his Norbo. And Pinkovic with the stretch of the pause wasn't able to keep it in. It will be a corner to the Stallions who are giving plenty of cheek at the moment. It is a good game, this one. Although the time factor weighs heavily against the Stallions if they are to pull off an improbable victory and score two or three or four they really have to uh, perhaps uh, trouble the scoreboard attendant pretty soon long strides Keep the football in bounds. Half out shot then. He's not overly happy. And he's having a talk to uh, Mark Shield. Well, he lost his, that argument. Yeah, he lost his place uh, a few weeks back at the expense of uh, Mark Babich. And a lot of people were shocked. Maybe Lee Sterry just trying to uh, give him a breather as. A lot of youngsters seem to need just to fire the engines up again and he's he's answered the call yet again he's been a very solid well-balanced defender for Marconi this season Marconi ball Patrick is more boat that's all right there it is he's testing the uh, Strength of uh, the garment. Oh, the big men into the box. Oh, that took a wicked bounce, Tomei. And he had to stretch for it. And again, the Stallions trotting and poking at South Melbourne. Stanzo, a good spot, hits Chris Kerr. Just a, a tail of the ball away from the goalkeeper, but didn't happen. Good spot by Penkovic. Docker, Luciana stands on the line. And Luches. Sikielowski. Picked off well by Jack Gibson. Marconi will get the chance to roll the dice in the front half again. Trash of bodies. Mark Shield lets it go. Nicholas. And again. Lutianus at that time. To sashay his way past. Not Again, the dragon run was almost enough to get Brosk clear. Well, they're going to give it for Wade their best shot. It's pretty clear that Marconi have come to play. They want to get three points here, don't they? If they're not going to play in the final series, they want everybody to know that they were there or thereabouts. And uh, while Eddie Krenshevik coaching against his old team, would have been confident i think he'll uh he'll have a few thoughts going through his mind at the moment it's not going to be an easy ride the 90 minutes in front of him stands out under pressure for the release get away oh, 
Fuxianas trying to shoulder his way, make a hole where there wasn't one. I think one of the problems too is though, they possibly trying to overplay. There's so many green shirts behind the ball when they've got it in possession. I think they've got to vary it and sometimes just look to play a diagonal ball into the Vaughan Coveney and use his height and uh, just bob a few lob bombs into the box there. The scenario is pretty simple. Marconi must win this game by four to maintain a claim on the one vacancy in the top six. Goss. For South Melbourne, should they win this, they are in the playoffs. And who would have thought that possible earlier in the season? If the match is drawn, Marconi are out of the running, but it opens the door. Ever so slightly for Parramatta Power and Northern Spirit. Even in that uh, goal difference. favours South Melbourne will make it difficult for either of those two. I think Parramatta, even if South Melbourne draw this one, if uh, they do, I think Parramatta would have to win by five, approximately, against the Melbourne Knights on Sunday. And of course, I'm not an accountant or a mathematician, so if I've got that wrong, I apologise. But... Well, it's not finished yet, but the uh, Kings saga if South Melbourne win tonight and Parramatta oh, yes. win on right. Sunday, then there's still two points out of it. If they, South Melbourne didn't have that three points, will Parramatta mount a legal challenge? And can it be dealt with in time to uh, commence the finals? Well, let's not delve into that too far anyway because we've got a darn good football match on at the moment. 27 minutes in Bob James Stadium Friday night final round of the season a face-off between two four-time national champions in their 50th match head-to-head -head. there's an example it I'm sure Alan of what you were talking about too many short passes too many players trying to play the five and six yard ball instead of getting their heads up a bit. Yeah, I think um, they're overplaying. Sometimes they've just got to whip the ball in the box. They've got Coveney with height and um, they've got to vary their play a bit. It's obviously they're getting frustrated, but the problem is they're getting Marconi just dropping behind the ball when they haven't got possession. And that's what's making it difficult. Just a bypass and just get in the box, see what happens. time Marconi came here of course in 19 last year they were trashed to the tune of 6-1 by this stage of the game last time here they were already three goals down that would have spoiled the night had that have happened again at the moment all level Butzianis well he got a hat-trick against Marconi here last year Yosefidis He's hesitant with the delivery. Oh, he just sweeps in and lopes away. Hits the gear shift. Not that time. He stands out. Crisis. Scare was pressured. I mentioned before, lady. I mean, no Brownlee and uh, Mosano. 17 to their 31 for the season gone. And an even more stark contrast. You look at Trimboli and Butzianis and Coveney alone. You've got nearly 300 goals between them. You take Tomei out of this lineup 
and you've got a total of about 50 goals between everybody else on the senior Marconi list. I mean, they are doing it tough tonight. They're losing their... Murdocha. Murdocha. And he will get a free kick. Well, he went against the pack. Radulovic argues the toss, but... Let's have a look again, Paul. Well, himself and Panopoulos are always going to work hard. They might not be successful all the time, but at least that uh, was a moment where Marconi had to become a little bit aggressive, a little bit more determined in defence. We saw Costanzo making a great challenge there. So, look, all over the ground, every part of the game at the moment is being played very well indeed. Does this remind you of anything? Wollongong, <laughs> last week, Butziana. Three minutes. Measures it up. Not this time, just caressed it for Trimboli. Panopoulos, an ugly mass of players. Clear by Webb in the end. An engaging scenario, isn't it? And you've got a game that both teams have to win. So you know that uh, they're not going to keep anything up their sleeve. They're not playing for a result. Well, the pleasing thing about this so far, and we've seen it a lot this season, is that teams only start playing after half time. When there is so much at stake, these two teams can't afford to start playing after half-time. They might be 2-0 down. Putzianis shaped a shoot, played it outside, flags up, will not count. Thank you. Oh, Marginal right. call, Trimboli uh, just has a word to the referee's assistant, but... Uh, let's have a look again. Vaughan Coveney. It wasn't trimmers at all, Vaughan. A little bit too eager and desperate to get on the end of one of those clinical runs of his. And why not? He scored three from them last week. But just on that point you made earlier about the Marconi up against it tonight, and you, you look at those two players, Brownlee and Mezzano, I think Mezzano will go close to one of the players of the year uh, he is de definitely one of the players of the year here at marconi but he's been in scintillating form and uh, the other one is brendan reno and i've seen brendan reno he's real angry of late he's come on as a substitute he's been kicked up the backside a couple of times this season and he's getting angrier and angrier and he, if anybody fires this team up it certainly is him and they'll miss that penetration down the left hand side or that so far they have well if anybody can empathize with uh, mark Carney's situation at the moment just getting men on deck it would be south melbourne because they were facing exactly the same sort of trials and tribulations in the first half of the season marconi unfortunately when it counts just have not got uh, the players on deck costanzo just in saying that, though, I think Marconi are really playing a great game plan, and uh, they've had a couple of good opportunities, Tomei in the box there. I agree. I think they've made it a, a, a pretty good game already because they're uh, taking the game up to South Melbourne. They're not overawed at all by the circumstances. It's Giannis. The crowd roars. And Radulovic just spoils the party. Actually, prior to the game, you know, I had expectations of South Melbourne really winning this comfortably. But uh, as it's panning out, I see that um, they could frustrate South Melbourne and uh, possibly spoil the party if it keeps going this way. Ambitious stuff from Longo. He galloped to the other top of the penalty area and uh, Sokolovsky just lets it roll in it. Well. He'll get a surprise because I think it's a, a stallion's ball. Tasmanian, who came over the mainland. Two corners each now.
Chad Gibson. Nothing between the two sides so far in this one. Oh, Petrovic came early, lost sight of it, had to fingertip it in the air, and Longo had a chance to swivel onto the football, but his right footer was into the bleachers, back row. Maybe, uh, let's just have a look at that again. Whipped that in, didn't he, Chad Gibson? It's just a, a matter of perhaps whether uh, the Stallions just have the armory up front to threaten South Melbourne. Huge responsibility for Norman Tomei. He is the key goal scorer out there for Marconi for Stanzo. Wires. Uh, well, he is a veteran, really. Andrew Costanza. Would you suggest then, Davo, that if you were uh, out there for South Melbourne, that if you are trying to go down, there are too many bodies in front of you, stretch it wide. I know they haven't got anybody out on this left-hand side, apart from Diamitris, and more often than not, he'll sit in that fullback role, but they've got Sekolovsky on the right-hand side. Maybe they've not used him enough. Well, if you really look at it, they're only playing with two up front, and there's four across the back with well when they're in possession but i mean you really um try to analyze how many crosses have come in from south melbourne really none and, and south melbourne has scored so many goals from crosses in the past and i'm just wondering um Shekolovsky and and uh, maybe butzianis getting the ball and whipping balls in earlier but they just don't can't seem to get the ball they're looking to play through the middle a bit too much maybe well it appears that way anyway Marconi haven't won on the road since uh, way back in round 10. They won in Adelaide. Second week in December that was. It's been a long time between drinks for Marconi away from home this year. But if this team on this evening could produce a substantial victory i reckon they would reserve a place on the wall at the marconi club put a plaque in their honor because it'll be one out of the box Giannis. and he looked for the free kick the crowd supported his case and he'll get it as well Milovic acknowledging the error of his ways it won't happen again you're on <laughs> look at Butsy. Well, i suppose if you're uh, trying to draw attention to the free kick you might as well make a bit of a theater bit of theater out of it Pogany and uh, Giannis team ball it's concerned Covney and eight. It's a great shot of the free kick. Well, it was a belter as well. Turnbull picked it perfectly. Melbourne have taken 24 points in their last 11 games since round 13. Perth considered by everybody to be the hottest team in the race this year, and for good reason. They've only taken 23 since the halfway mark, so if you started the season then, South Melbourne would be ranked number one. They are showing some form, but I'll tell you what, Marconi. They're not going to let them have this one cheaply. Chauvinie just got to it. Sekulovsky chases down Costanzo, who is it clear. Through the last five, 
of regulation in the first half round 26 of the Bob Jane in Melbourne. South Melbourne nil, Marconi nil. I tell you what, that'd set us up if Marconi could maybe break the game open before half time. But Butzianis! Oh, oh you're special! The walking headline from Butzianis. Sometimes for. Uh, all the wrong reasons, but quite often, for moments like that, that was an absolute thumper from Kambutianis. His 99th career goal, and a beauty it was. South Melbourne up by one. Dare I say, give him a green and gold shirt now for the upcoming Socceroo games. It'll be largely built up according to a lot of the pundits. Good ball from Fausto Diamitris. Look how early Kombuzianis looks up. Takes a little, it doesn't even take a touch. That's how confident he was. <laughs> Michael Turnbull. Well, you really can't blame Michael, can you? I mean, he, he was in a decent position. If the, he had taken him on one-on-one, -on -one, he had the, he was in the right position to come out and narrow the angle. Just too good in the end, Comp. Well, he is, he is just a remarkable talent, Convertianis. Chris Kerr on screen here, trying to return the fire at the other end. Davo, a lot of players play an entire career hoping to have a moment like that. Butzianis does it every second or third week. Yeah, well, you know, again, you know, we talk about their quality, but uh, what South Melbourne do have, we've seen it with uh, a tight game against uh, Sydney Olympic, where Jim Bowley showed a bit of magic and, and actually scored the first, and they went on to win it. And now we've seen a bit of magic by uh, Butzianis. So they've got the magic in the team and some key players and, and opens the game up. Now, now Marconi definitely have to come out. So it'll, it'll play into South Melbourne's hands. Well, I said at uh, a kickoff, does this South Melbourne fairy story end with happily ever after? Well, <laughs> Butzianis. Trimboli to skip up, Sikulowski. Tom <laughs> uh, with that goal, he goes to 99 career. Would that not be an extraordinary story if Butchie could nail his goal number 100 tonight and put South Melbourne into the playoffs against, well, against every prediction, I reckon, it. Uh, the halfway point of the season. Butzianis returns and South Melbourne go from board lollies to chocolates in half a season. That has to be a real possibility too with, the, with another half to go with Butzi. End of the last two minutes of regulation and uh, certainly South Melbourne at the moment. Well, everybody in the stadium, I think, Got a bit of an adrenaline rush. With that Convertiano's goal on 41 minutes. That makes Marconi's task in, in winning this game by a margin that would keep them alive almost impossible. However, as far as uh, Parramatta and uh, Northern Spirit are concerned, just another uh, goal or two. And Marconi has given them a lifeline anyway. Oh, Costanzo. Almost gave himself too much work to do. Mate. Rask. Rask by Kuznelbo. That goal takes a bit of the pressure off the players as well now. And, uh, opens the game wide up, Greg. The Stallions' approach to this game has been a joy for much of this first half, but all of a sudden they're just back on their haunches a little bit. The answer before half-time, no. Not from that anyway. That can be truly Eyes darting about trying to spot an option. 
minute of injury time break. Thanks, Davo. Tiannis, man of the moment. Trimboli, the skipper, who will play his 400th game for South Melbourne if they go into the playoffs. Uh, free kick was pretty obvious. Marconi get another chance to deliver a blow on the scoreboard before the interval. Steve Panopoulos. Twelve games with Panopolis, all with the one club. Gibson, easy away for South Melbourne. They lead by a goal to nil at the moment. They are in the top six. Of course. And that's all we're going to have for the first half. Here at the Bob Jane in round 26, there he is, Konvotsianis, the man of the moment. He has not been out of the headlines since he came back from the Kings to rejoin South Melbourne at mid-year. And tonight he has put South Melbourne in front in this crucial game for both clubs. most audacious comebacks in a season by any team ever in the history of this competition dead last and well they just didn't look like it after 13 rounds but having said that Marconi can still perhaps not make the top six that would be probably out of the question now but they can still do some damage and do a favor for Two of their Sydney rival clubs, if they can make something in the second half against the home side, who will get the footy to commence this second 45 minutes. South Melbourne in the uh, blue, heading to right of screen, the scoreboard end, which reads South Melbourne 1, Marconi Stallions 0. a real rivalry between the two clubs. South Melbourne look back on the finals way back in uh, 1993 when they were hung out to dry by Marconi. A galling 7-0 defeat in the major semi-final that year. Recalled still as the blackest day in South Melbourne history. They've been trying to exact revenge ever since Panopolis plows that one through the sky. Demetrius trying to chop it upfield. Costanzo was there. Dorovic. Right to left. Teammate. Double team. Sekulovsky. from a distance by Gibson in the end was well off target but uh, I mean game is Ned Kelly really to coin a phrase Marconi in the first half but maybe just didn't have the uh, the players on deck to do the damage that was Vaughan Coveney his triple last week took him to 75 career there is goal scoring pedigree in this South Melbourne lineup which was something they didn't have in the early part of the season of course and of course not that time let's go down so no let's wait see if Marconi can produce something from this care let's go down to Alan Davidson on the sideline with David Lowe. Well, Lowe you've got to be really happy with the game plan and the way you performed in the first half 
Yeah, I think other than the goal, which was, you know, a bit of magic from Con, uh, you know, things went reasonably well for us. Colvin E. Let's go with his dive out because uh, as the game has from the get-go, it has thundered from end to end and uh, continues unabated. Luciano's and has the duties from the corner. Michael Turnbull, who is in no way. To, oh, gee, where's Putzianis? Hello. It's his night. Alan Davidson. Yeah, like obviously a, a magic there again by Butzianis, but uh, is the game plan going to change now? Is Kerr and, and Gibson going to push forward, or are you going to stay the same? Uh, well, we'll play our, our normal passing game. Obviously, the longer the half goes on, the uh, the more we're going to probably push people in, maybe introduce uh, another one or two players off the bench. But, um, you know, we're pretty happy with the way we build up. Um, just need to do things a little bit sharper at the, at the uh, focal point. Just one last question, Lowy. That's not the new club tie, is it? Uh, <laughs> no, it's not the new club tie. It's just supposed to be a lucky omen, but uh, it's not working just yet. Hopefully it'll pick up a little bit in the last uh, half an hour or so. Thanks, Lowy. Good luck, mate. Thanks, David. Alan Davidson, uh, specialist comments and expert, uh, fashion expert, resident fashion expert as well, which is terrific. Many strings to his bow. Some speculation during the week about uh, the South Melbourne players coming out of contract at the end of the year. Well, Coveney's one of them. And I think at the moment, Coveney and uh, a couple of his teammates who are off contract, that would be about the last thing they'd be thinking about. Because the finals are beckoning. And they have uh, done it the hard way this year, South Melbourne. don't uh, wish to get carried away but their form has been superb and whilst no team has ever won the championship from sixth you'd have to rank them uh, some sort of a chance on what they're producing at the moment let's go down to the sideline again this time with Jeff Oliver and Alan Davidson Jeff, obviously a bit frustrating first half. Um, obviously, Mark only sitting in behind the ball. Yeah, they make it very difficult for us to play. I mean, uh, to be fair, we, we haven't been happy with the first half. Obviously, we're happy with the result, but we're forcing things. A part of our pass is not our normal self, and we're trying to force things rather than be patient. So that's the message Eddie preached at half time. So hopefully, we can get our passing game going better. We may hopefully open them up a bit more. Yeah, well, we come accustomed to. We've got to mention Butzianis' goal. He's, he's pulled one out the head again, and. Uh, at a crucial time, just before half-time. Yeah, well, he didn't... Uh, well, we were saying that on the bench. He hadn't had a great game too then. I mean, he's worked fairly hard off the ball, but again, if anybody's going to do something like that, it's fine. It's a super goal. Wide players. Not many crosses coming in today. You know, Coveney may be going wide and Diamici's pushing forward. Yeah, well, we, we, we've played a lot of ball central in the first half and we weren't happy about it. We want to try and get Ray Sikoloski into the game and felt so, but we haven't done that in the first half. And to Marconi's credit... Oh, Marconi a chance here. Sorry, fellas. But they are pressing again, the Stallions. Gee, they've shown some courage. But maybe the break on at the other end. Petkovic hits Tromboli. Very deep, he just waits. Sikulovsky. Colony. Butzianos. And you can hear Chip Holver. Butzi hit it. Let's go down to uh, Alan Davidson again with Jeff Olver. Yeah, Jeff, we were just talking about those wide players and some of the key players not being involved in the game. Yeah, well, as I say, and Marconi getting numbers behind the ball making it difficult for us. Like uh, that situation just there, when we do get him on the break, we've got to do it quickly. And if we do that quickly, we, as you say, Beats never got in. So that's what we're going to do more of the second half. Well done, Jeff. All the best, mate. Thanks for yourself. Thanks, Alan. Well done once again. And you can hear Jeff Olver rooting for Butzi to... Uh, Get his second of the game. It uh, was interesting just to hear Jeff Olver saying, well, he hadn't had a good game up until then. Well, fair dinkum, if he does one of those every week, <laughs> you wouldn't care, would you? No, you wouldn't. But I, I don't know whether he, 
I mean, gee, there must be hard markers. Oh, Tomo was good then. Gee, they're knocking at the door, Marcani. They've shown some courage. Regardless of the result, Murdoka through traffic, Murdoka, bang! Well, in the end, he was becoming an unstoppable force. And there wasn't much else they could do. Well, a lot of players would have checked and doubled back and try and kept possession, but Madoka forces situations like that. He commits players to make a foul, and now South Melbourne are in an absolutely gorgeous position, especially when Combrutzianis is on the park. Madoka, too, is not only particularly quick and brave but he's just pint size as well he can fly through a keyhole and going up to the right of the screen and then Tony Wall in the perimeter of the penalty area Butzianis oh Just sense that he's going to get his hundred tonight, don't you? Well, where do you stand as a goalkeeper? Michael Turnbull tried standing in the middle of his goal and got pinged with the last one. I mean, he is really having a hard time trying to pick which angle Con's going to go next. Well, he uh, managed to uh, pummel it onto the woodwork from the corner before Butzianis. My goodness gracious me, the tonner with one of the more remarkable goals of the season, Kombutzianis. It is your night. South Melbourne are going to go to the playoffs riding on the back of the brilliance of Kombutzianis. He is worth the admission money on his own have a look at this 100 goals career what a way to do it I tell you, I tell you what, Greg, you've got to ask yourself what a signing who was it Beecham who was standing in the way of Michael Turnbull on that occasion so, whoever it was I mean that was what really caused the problem Beecham had to stretch over the top sorry Turnbull had to stretch over the top of Beecham you talk about causing the problem though, the audacity of Confucianus from the corner twice in a row same thing he's nailed a hundred I can there are punters going back to the turnstiles to pay again as we speak <laughs> just for the privilege of being here for that Butzianis becomes the 14th player in the 27 year history of the competition to a hundred goals but I just wonder if there's ever been a player who has so electrified with the style in which he scores his goals. Tonight has been one out of the hat. South Melbourne up by two goals to nil. And whilst there will be Stallions fans and Parramatta fans and Northern Spirit fans looking on and, well, they'll be a, a bit disappointed with uh, the way it's unravelling. I'm sure even they would not try to diminish the quality of entertainment provided by one C. Butzianis. Gibson, Kerr, Goss. Well, the lead up was. Uh, Pretty smart. It's Chad Gibson. Like another 150 players in the league is no Conbutzianis. Well, that one is Conbutzianis. A century for the disco kid, as they called him when he first rolled into uh, NSL ranks, and he never particularly liked that nickname, but. He's had several. And 
call him what you like, but he is a special talent. I remember Puskas saying he wasn't good enough to play at South Melbourne because he didn't have the engines. He couldn't run for 90 minutes, as you quite rightly said. Who cares when you score goals <laughs> like that? <laughs> Just good on your parents. <laughs> probably out of the contest to some degree but uh, if you walked away from this one saying you haven't been entertained thus far pretty sour indeed I reckon Trimboli off Cofanzo and the body did well Chris Kerr launches one time mate didn't quite get the read on it on the run Sigalowski. They are super confident at the moment too, South Melbourne. Even their one defeat in this extraordinary run from the bottom of the ladder at Brisbane. They didn't come away at all deflated by that. It was a long ball game. But let's just hope the story doesn't get worse for Mark Hardy. As we head toward the hour mark. Hands on hips. Well, he's done his work tonight. He's earned his pay already. He got a triple here against Marconi last season. Just quickly, I've seen him score a goal from this distance. Sydney United two or three seasons ago. <laughs> Turnbull just sat back and took that comfortably in the end con Butzianis. tell you what i wonder if this is an omen though because with Trimboli and Butzianis now centurions there's only one other time believe it or not in nsl history when two 100 plus goal scorers have played on the same team and that was rod brown and frank farina at brisbane in 97 and uh they won the championship that year <laughs> Comedy shields the ball. Standard that one. Nadoka, oh, he's quick. He's rimfire. Quick little Nadoka. That was so very close to being over the line. Hard palpitations. The South Melbourne fans, the decibel level in this stadium is extraordinary at the moment. Sometimes I think you have to take the knocks to appreciate the success of South Melbourne have had so many successful years, but the first half of this year they were damaged and hurt. The fans were staying away, they were dispirited. All of a sudden they are back and uh, really enjoying this. Still uh, pretty pleased with on that. On the bench there, he took Marconi to the finals in consecutive seasons in his two years at the club. But uh, Frinjevic has got a pretty good record of getting teams to the playoffs, but he's never taken a team to the summit yet. Butzianis. <laughs> well, he's going to have a hit now, isn't he? <laughs> There's an expectation when he's on fire, as he is tonight, every time he gets the footy, that something remarkable is going to happen. Dave, let me ask you the question. Would you give him a green and gold shirt if you were the coach right now? Oh, definitely on his form. You know, um, you know that uh, he's capable of some magic now. The thing is, the way he's playing, you've got to take that consideration, and, and uh, he's a goal scorer. You can't, how many goal scorers are in the National League that score goals like him? They, uh, they perhaps didn't break the mould when they produced Blitzy, but my word, they use it sparingly. Lots of fitties, up ends, Alex Grot. Steve Yosefidis, one of the unsung heroes of South Melbourne's uh, 
championship teams of the late 90s. Gibson wipes the brow. Still time and still a gettable margin to keep the season alive for at least Parramatta Power anyway. They're going to be hard pressed, aren't they, Mike Tony? Psychologically, they will be hurt by those two goals simply because they really gave it a contest. And it's just been two moments of sheer brilliance that have broken the game open. Sikorovsky. They're pumped, aren't they, uh, Paul Wade? They are loving every minute of this, but I just wonder if there are any lawyers and solicitors sitting back at the Parramatta Eels Club and uh, North the pub just outside the North Sydney ground, just rubbing their hands together in glee. They've got a bit of work to do. No docker. Closed down at the end by, of course. Well, McConaughey, this will end a run of uh, six consecutive seasons in the finals. It's a rarity to see the Stallions out of the action at the business end of the year. Coveney. I just think on that point too, Greg, though, with the Stallions, um, in fairness to Lee Sterry, though, you know, he had to rebuild the team and uh, it was a transitional year for him as well. He's blooded, blooded six new players this year and uh, I suppose in the last game there's three key players out. Oh, look, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I think we've probably uh, spoken about that a couple of times. An inexperienced team going into the season. You can't afford to lose him the games like this at critical points of the season. Butzianis rifles that one. It took a wicked bounce, but uh, Turnbull, well, he hasn't been unnerved. Butzianis, two goals tonight. The only two of the game on 41 and 54. Both will be considered no doubt when uh, they adjudicate goal of the year and he gets his hundred as well he joins the elite really and for someone who had been dismissed on more than one occasion as an erratic talent To play 250 plus games, I think it's 254 tonight, and 100 goals. I'm going to credit him with sticking at it. And Penobla just tried to caress that around our course. Coveney was galloping away. Even Makani had just about given it the best they could, Whitey. You just get a feel about it, don't you? At the moment, they threaten to uh, to be overwhelmed, don't they? Butzianis through the gap. No. Nope. Every time he gets the footy, you wait, don't you? You just think <laughs> something is about to happen. He also played this. Drops one over the top. Dordovich. Well, if that is the end of Marconi, I think it, it might have been suggested in a situation where Con Butzianis took a free kick. It bounced up in front of Turnbull and there were only two blue shirts following in. No green shirts turned around to try and protect their goalkeeper. Now, I don't know whether that means they've given up, they're tired, or they just assume that Michael Turnbull is going to make a save. So though they're going to the benchmark, honey, but they must be dispirited giving, you know, I mean, they really gave something in that first half, only to get uh, knocked back on their uh, heels by a couple of goals of that uh, nature. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, obviously Radulovic would be disappointed coming on and coming off uh, in Herring and Avalon coming on. Lee Sterry, the coach of Marconi there on screen. 
Well, if this is to be his last game at the Stallion, and it appears that it may be at this stage, I reckon he can hold his head high too. South Melbourne fans are in uh, a party mood at the moment. Rakovic should be enjoying this. There's uh, not too fond memories of matches against Marconi Pass. If I recall correctly, Paul Waite, and I think you missed the game, though. That was during that 7 0 thumping <laughs> when Glenn Johnson. Uh, shirt fronted member Jurakovic who he left that match on a stretcher i'm glad you mentioned the fact that i wasn't there <laughs> yeah, well i think I, you had a you had a quote unquote virus and uh <laughs> yeah. i tell you what though i listened to it on the radio and it was well i I've, I've almost felt as devastated listening to it as the boys must have felt receiving a shellacking like that seven nil Finals record, Marconi over South Melbourne, and they really, they seriously haven't forgotten it at South Melbourne. Still rankles with them to this day. They won't be thinking about it at the moment, though. They're up by two goals to nil. It is the final home and away round of the season. And South Melbourne have just cranked it up again, another level. Yolovsky, on high. Stands up, change of direction. Thunders his way through the trouble zone. So, mate, heads up play with the back heel. Webb. Lost. I mean, I think the other thing, too, is not only did Marconi come into this one weakened offensively, I mean, we keep forgetting that this is the best defence in the competition, South Melbourne, statistically. More clean sheets than any other team. Yeah, I think there's a number of factors, especially their form, you know, the, the defensive record, the, you know, Trimboli, Luzianis and Coven Hill coming back at the right time. The worst team to play, I just, you know, at least they were saying before the game, it's the worst team to meet at this stage. Oh, there will be some teams in the top six dreading the thought of taking on South Melbourne over two matches in an elimination final. You can guarantee that because one of them will be here and all of a sudden it's become a, a forbidding venue again. Well, goalkeeper palmed away. Tomei tries to keep it in play. Actually, I think in that third position is wide open still, and uh, you're wondering if uh, you want to finish third <laughs> to meet South Melbourne. Having said that, of course, uh, South Melbourne can in fact finish fourth, as high as fourth. Again, depending on results, if Brisbane were to lose to Perth, and uh, I wouldn't bet on this one, but if uh, Olympic Sharks rather Melbourne Knights were to lose to Parramatta I was going to say Sharks against Kings but uh, South Melbourne could actually finish the season four which would be remarkable in itself with 71 in here and the contest has lost its sting to some degree but we have had a couple of goals light up this contest and this season South Melbourne are on their way to the playoffs for the 14th time and a chance perhaps at, a, at an unprecedented fifth national crown. Marconi won't give it away and easily though and they'll force the corner. over to the corner kick for the Stallions. Petrovic. And with a big stretch. Michael Petrovic reels the ball in. Boss. 
interesting to see where the Stallions do go in what direction they take. Oh, ball straight up the middle, nearly polished off by Madoka. Trimboli is so quick to see the options. Panopoulos down on his backside behind play. Madoka not happy with his finish. The one moment of genius in that was that fellow Paul Trimboli who... Well, he deserve all the plaudits he gets, he really does. I know he's saying a couple of prayers, if only, but the reason he was in that position was because when the ball was cleared by Michael Pekovic, he was the only one to chase it down to the 18-yard box at the other end. Joe Barrett yeah. changed for South Melbourne. Yeah, Captain Paul Trimboli coming off and uh, Joe Barchard coming on, adding the pace up front again. Looks like Luciano's might drop in the hole there in midfield. And Paul Trimboli the most uh, decorated player in NSL history in terms of uh, Warren Medal Player of the Year. I think he's won a couple of those. He's won an under-21 Player of the Year, three championship medals. But I, I reckon, despite all the triumphs, we will look back fondly on this season as well, regardless of where it goes from here. They were dead last at the halfway mark of the season, South Melbourne. And they are now just a little over a quarter of an hour away from going to the finals. Well, Davo made the comment, Alan, I'm sure you would uh, remember, that you said maybe Eddie Krenchevic might be coach of the year. Usually it's the championship winning coach, but on a performance like this, the end of this season, if they get anywhere in the finals, you'd have to look back at this as a major contribution. I think at the, at the start of the year, we were talking about the transitional year. People had to be patient, and uh, when they were sitting on the bottom of the ladder, and uh, no one really gave him much hope, but Eddie was still confident in, in his ability, and uh, he worked hard, and, and I think Eddie deserves, you know, to be a definitely, definitely going to be a candidate for it, I would imagine. And, um, you know, if they go well in the finals, you know, you know I think he's deserved it because he's rebuilt this team. Well, it just goes to show you what mugs the experts are, including myself, because you wouldn't have uh, backed them with Monopoly money. And that's, ju a, 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 and that's just a credit to Eddie again, because, um, you know, he signed Butzianis, um, a couple of injured players coming back. He's blooded Madoka. No, none of us knew Madoka at the start of the year. We've seen a lot of youngsters this year come into the team, and they've all been blooded. And, uh, and here we are talking about the final. So, you know, really congratulations to Eddie on the season. It's 2-0 South Melbourne into the last quarter of an hour. Round 26 action. The season will continue, it appears, for South Melbourne. This won't be the last game of the year for them, and it won't be the last game at the Bob Jane. The elimination rounds, of course, home and away. Third plays sixth. Fourth plays fifth. Over two legs. to see Marconi perhaps just rewarded with something in the closing stages of the game. They tried so desperately hard to come here and make a contest of it against a team that is building up an irresistible momentum. Cast my mind back to the start of the season and Lee Sterry took over the team for the first time and long go. Sorry, Wadey. Well, straight through the sea of legs. Putsy Arnis gave up the chase. Oh Putsy, that's not nearly good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Set yourself standards, big fella. You've got to uh, live up to him. Actually, I thought he did his hands in here. Lee Sterry, uh, saw his team for the first time pre-season and he thought he'd get them in a small-sided game just to uh, see what they were made of and the two sides were keeping possession for 25 and 30 touches and he didn't know whether that was because they were horrible in defense or because they were good footballers and i think he's realized 
the qualities in this football team and he's let them play accordingly now we were raving about one coach on one side i think we should as we already have just allowed this football team to uh, express itself there is almost a mirror image between the both clubs in the two halves of the season south melbourne were having much the same problem problems in the first half of the year Marconi, you've got to remember, spent the 11 of the first 13 weeks of the season in the top six. And of course, it's all fallen away now. See if they can lift in the closing stages of their season. Not just this match, it's all over now for the, for the Stallions. For a few months anyway. Dovey draws it in. Saunders away. He speared the ball for the running Barchuk. Well picked off by no champ though. This will be South Melbourne's ninth clean sheet of the season. Even when they were struggling up front to score goals, and they really were, they weren't giving too many away. Two special goals tonight from Convertianis. The docker through the gap. Massimo the docker off the post, maybe. Butzi hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> well, how could he miss that? <laughs> Expect the unexpected from Convertianis. It's on the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they'll talk about on the way home. No doubt about it. Forget the other goals. We'll see again. This is why Jeff Oliver made the point before. This man is so disappointed in so many ways. <laughs> but, uh, gee, that's perplexing. He has nailed two of the most brilliant goals of the season. And... Uh, on the cusp of a hat trick. He blew it. Mark Shield is booking Angelo Costanzo, I think it was. I see another change here, too, with this amazing uh, Bobby Kettman coming on and Turnbull coming off. So, well, Chad Gibson's having a talk to Mark Shield now. Unless I'm sure that Chad Gibson was actually booked before so it must have been for Stanzo. Bobby Catlin just went past Bootsy and said listen don't score now I've just come on. <laughs> <laughs> well Bobby Catlin he's had quite a career himself. 345 games. Bobby Catlin he's got a Career successes and well, it's uh, draw your six guns, Butsy. Oh, and he tested Bobby Catlin, and he did really well. The big fella, the veteran, he had to launch himself. Usually, you get a back pass or two to get warmed up, but that's his <laughs> first touch. Well done, big Bob. I reckon he's sponsored by Brescia Furniture. As he doesn't sit on the bench, he sits on a couch on the end of the bench. <laughs> and Butzianis, he has. He's been the story of the night, Con Butzianis. And another corner to South Melbourne. They're just. So they're just threatening now to overwhelm Marconi. Less than 10 minutes on the clock. Seventh corner now to South Melbourne. They are buoyant here at the Bob Jane Stadium. Vaughan Coveney. Garnish on the dish now. The most unlikely comeback 
probably in NFL history. Is now all but complete as Warren Coveney makes it three. And the ugly duckling that no one wanted at mid year. Actually, you've got to look at the quality of Vizziani's corners. That Vizzi's corners there, uh, Blakey, you know, uh, Paul. These set pieces are really incredible. The quality of the service coming in, you know, defender trying to get onto it, and uh, Paul Coveney in the just puts it away. Dave, look, you're down in the coal face there. We watched South Melbourne win the minor premiership last year. They went into the finals. The fans, I think, in many respects, were so used to success. Let's just go with this, Marconi on. Still hammering away there, but I, I can't remember the South Melbourne fans being this loud for a long time. They are absolutely Thrilled to bits, aren't they? It's like a double change here too. Leah and Sally like coming on. At this stage, uh, well, it's all academic now, really. Let's see who's getting the rest for South Melbourne. Sekulovsky's obviously one of them. It looks like Bootsy. He don't want to come off, though. Sekulovsky comes out. And the man to the left of screen just there. Honestly. It has been his night. He was a story again. He's been back at the club for 13 weeks, Wadey. And on probably four or five occasions, he has been the man that has changed the fortunes for South Melbourne. Two goals tonight, two specials tonight. Stands out. He did well just to keep possession. Sabaliak, Pendrick. He got his first sniff of the football. And it'll be Sabaliak. I think the other thing too is Alan Davidson. They've really got some quick players out there. Sabaliak's got some toe. Yeah. Barchak, Coveney. I mean, these are genuinely quick players. And it'll be Madoka. Madoka. Now, with Madoka, it's just sort of, here he comes, there he goes. And there's a gust of air goes by. Yeah, just in talking about that pace, you know, they've got his uh, Norbo at the back and they've got the rack of explosion from Boda. You know, they've got a bit of pace at both ends. Can they get something on the scoreboard for their efforts? Yes, they can. Great angle left footer on the run. Webb, 3-1. They deserved a goal. Some sort of reward. Actually, a great finish by Webb there. Good strike. And uh, like you said, they definitely deserve it. Um, they're taking the game to South Melbourne. And uh, really, they've, beaten, they've been beaten by one man, the magic of Gutianis. But uh, they really had a go at uh, South Melbourne here at Bob Jane. They gave as much as they could with what they had. They were punched into submission by some special goals, but they still haven't given up the cause. And Shane Webb, second goal of the season, second goal career, and it wasn't a bad finish either. To make it 3-1 and give them some respect on the scoreboard, the Stallions. And they are a club that commands respect. Madoka. Shark. That is a belter for Panopoulos. And again, for the second time of the match. South Melbourne, miss a goal by the whip for the woodwork. Varchak. Oh, they are in the mood tonight. South Melbourne, they are shot full of confidence at the moment. And uh, 
just pops the ball into the South Melbourne fans at the scoreboard end, conceding in another corner. And the South Melbourne bandwagon rolls along merrily. Blachek's corner. Kick the ankles of Savoyak. Leah. Coveney. They should have now scored perhaps five or six, to be honest. They have been like a tidal wave in this second half, South Melbourne. And they've actually missed a couple that they should have scored and whilst uh, when you're holding a 3-1 lead it really doesn't matter all that much they're the sort of chances Alan Davidson you don't want to be missing at this point of the season because come the finals they won't get as many opportunities will they yeah I, I think I, th I think the luxury that South Melbourne have is, you know, it started off as a tight game, but they have guys like Jim Bowley, they have guys like Coveney and especially Butzianis that have magic to score goals in tight areas. Turnover, but uh, Mark Shield pulls it back. Paul Coveney has scored one, might have scored two. Butzianis is off the paddock, scored two and should have scored three. And we've got the flags down, Tomei, deep. Is Norbo with him? And they'll get a corner for their efforts. Well, you mentioned chances, and Madoc has hit the post, and uh, Panopoulos has hit the, the crossbar. So, well, Marconi have been to the playoffs 15 times, they've been for the last six consecutive years. But in the final 15 seconds of this season, plus a bit of stoppage time, they're not going back this year. Coveney away, toe pokes it. The Madoka. Chris Kerr did really well to run back with him. Just ran inside him. Good stuff. Bochak for Madoka. Catlin. Stein now that South Melbourne will play in the finals. Marconi won't, so. Two minutes injury time, Greg. Thank you, Alan Davidson. Images. Catlin. Having a long look upfield. With the free kick. Now he uh, made his NSL return this year for South Melbourne, former Melbourne Knights. Come out Eddie Krinjevich to the left, Jeff Olver to his right. And Jeff Olver, who uh, doesn't offer up uh, smiles too cheaply, surely even he will be sporting a broad grin this evening. Savoyak, Coveney, skewed that off the outside of his boot. Eddie Kronjevich, screen who has been on the cusp of success a couple of times as a coach. He'll get another chance in the finals this year. Yeah, Vaughan very frustrated there. He got a bad bobble just as he struck the ball there. and. Uh, with a bit of luck, he could have had a hat-trick as well with, with, with Woodsianis having a bit of luck with a hat-trick. Well, he had to wait uh, 250-odd games for his first hat-trick last week up at Wollongong. So perhaps it's just the, the yin and yang.
the South Melbourne fans. At the moment, I think just waiting impatiently for that final whistle. I reckon the social club will be chockers tonight. Well, some of those fans too, who were pretty dismissive of their team at mid-year. Have we got some? Uh, and another chance goes begging. What's new? Samuel's Bachak. There'll be a few South Melbourne fans who were uh, talking it down at mid-year. They'll be eating humble pie. Mark Shield blows the whistle. The most remarkable comeback from bottom of the ladder. South Melbourne are going to the finals. They've beaten Marconi by three goals to one. Dominic Longo offers up congratulations. I think he would accept as much as anyone else that uh, this South Melbourne team is building up a head of steam that may cause some major league damage come finals time. Convertianus was the story tonight. Look at Paul Triboli, the skipper. Bobby Gatlin, the veteran goalkeeper, we've got to run toward the end of the game. But Butzianis just electrified the Bob Jane tonight with a couple of marvellous strikes on either side of half time, 41 and 54. Vaughan Coveney got a third for South Melbourne, and then Shane Webb dragged one back for Mark Coney, and good on him too. The season is over for the Stallions, but this part of the season that is the most enjoyable of all is not over for South Melbourne. Final score from the Bob James Stadium, South Melbourne 3, Marconi Stallions 1. Well, the South Melbourne players, you just wonder whether they believe it themselves at the moment. 27 points from a possible 36 in the second half of the year and they are launching a bid for the championship i reckon from the elimination final there'll be a couple of teams running scared of south melbourne let's go down to paul wade on the sideline thanks very much greg yes i totally agree with that point the man who could scare them though is con butzianis and he joins me on the sideline con Congratulations, some goal, especially that one you put over the top of Michael Turnbull. Yeah, um, we were struggling in the first probably 20, 30 minutes. Marconi played fairly well, um, and Fausto put a great ball over. I just ran onto it, and I go, oh, forget about this, I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can, and uh, took that loop and went so high in the end. Luckily, it went in. Now, you're a champion when you score them, but you miss them as well. What about the one at the other end? <laughs> it was my, I think it was my 99th. I was going for my 100th. I choked. I don't think I've choked that much in my whole life. I could have walked it in, but yeah, m maybe we could have about seven goals, maybe eight goals tonight, but keep it for the finals, I think. <laughs> yeah, you got your hundredth goal. Now, let's talk about the finals. Uh, the prospects now, they must be through the roof, considering where you were. I think, uh, you know, we're probably the form team because uh, we've got nothing to lose, and a lot of teams uh, will be a little bit discouraged in playing us. And, um, it should be entertaining, you know, there was a good crowd tonight, it's good to see the people have come back and we hope that, um, you know, we, we can take step by step and do something remarkable. Good on you, Con, thanks very much for your time. Con Butzianis, 100 goals in the National Soccer League and the captain of Marconi, Dominic Longo. Dominic, so much expectation when you got here. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, mathematically it was always going to be very difficult for us. I thought in the first 35 minutes we did quite well, you know, except for the couple of great goals from Con. Uh, sort of knocked the stuffing out of us uh, when we're 2-0 down you know it's quite quite hard to come back from that you know it's impossible for us but the first 45 I was really proud of our guys the way they fought you know we could have come down here and laid down but we didn't we tried a couple of good goals and um, that was uh, that was it for us mate but full credit to our guys you know we're there right until the finish and um, I'd like to thank all the supporters and for all the uh, Marconi players there it's been great. well when you first turned up here I mean the expectations couldn't have been that high you must be very pleased just to get to the edge of the top six yeah, I mean, uh, it was always very difficult coming to in the last few rounds, you know, we were just on the edge of the top six. We had a couple of good results recently, which keep, kept us in touch with those uh, teams just above us, but it was just out of our reach, you know, a couple of goals, one or two points, makes a big difference, mate. Well, have a great rest over the next four months. Well done, Dom. Dominic Longo, uh, the captain of Marconi, and we sh he should be proud. And the, the word is that Bobby Catlin now has retired from football. Not a really good way to go out. 
Well, you know, Bobby's a great man and, uh, you know, he's a great friend, but, uh, you know, he's made his decision and we wish him all the best off the field. But, uh, but in saying that, you know, Mark only can go home, you know, proud of what they achieved today. Like, they didn't get the result they wanted, but uh, just their performance, their passing game, and uh, they did have a couple of opportunities where they really uh, frustrated South Melbourne. Well, why don't we have a look at the Kombutsianas goals? Very special indeed, as has been described by Greg Blake, the early ball from Fausto Diamichis. This was the best of it. Well, this must go down as the goal of the year, or absolutely, must be in there with the top two, because Bucci's just got goal side of the player, and, uh, and he's, listen, like you said, he's hit it as hard as he can, and uh, maybe a bit of luck, but uh, because of his high quality, we've come accustomed to him scoring goals. There's another one, Bucci's on a set piece, and the quality of the service coming in from his set pieces, and that's the real issue there with Bucci's quality. Well, you can watch that uh, time after time after time. We've got plenty more action this weekend. It's uh, Parramatta against the Melbourne Knights. Parramatta Stadium, all the Parramatta Power players.